What's good? We're using the Crazy Ninja Mike Sportsbook Devigor again today, but today we're talking correlation. Correlation is really important because same game parlays are just so darn prevalent. And even if you don't bet same game parlays, and most of you probably shouldn't because they're generally horrible bets and there's a reason the sportsbooks promote the heck out of them. But regardless, even if you don't bet same game parlays, they are important for devigging all these boosts because those boosts can actually be quite profitable at times, whether it's on DraftKings, Hard Rock, FanDuel, obviously, BetMGM, Caesars, they all promote same game parlays and sometimes they can be quite good. So you don't necessarily want to pass those up just because you know that same game parlays are generally bad bets. Anything is a good bet at the right odds, right? So if they're giving you really boosted odds, it can be profitable. So to figure out how good those bets are, we can use the Crazy Ninja Mike Sportsbook Vigor, and we can account for correlation within this tool. It's not all that complicated. It's a little bit more complicated than the last video. If you didn't see the last video, I will link it below. We went over kind of the basics on how to use the Vigor, how to devig a regular bet, meaning find the true odds of a regular bet, find the true odds of a parlay, find the true odds of a multi-way market, like on betting someone to win a NASCAR race or a golf tournament or a soccer game when you have three ways. We covered all that in the last video and just how to devig a normal boost, but today we're gonna talk about anything that's correlated. There's actually two different ways that we can account for correlation within the Crazy Ninja Mike Devigor, both kind of with their own pros and cons. Not that there's anything wrong with this tool, and I'll explain, you'll see what I mean in a little bit, but it more has to do with the sports books themselves having some flaws, but we'll get into those. The first method I'm gonna show you is with the correlation text box. There's actually another method to account for correlation without the correlation text box. Like I said, it's a little bit confusing, but I promise you'll follow along. So we've got a boost, a hypothetical boost. It's for Jimmy Butler to score 25 plus points and the Heat to win. So Heat money line, pretty standard boost. These sports books aren't very creative with their boosts. A lot of times it's just like one star player to go over his point total and maybe his team to win or something like that. So it's a pretty realistic boost that we could see. But to start things off, we use the exact same method that we used in the last video. We find the odds for each leg of the parlay to hit. So maybe we used an odd screener or we took from Circa or Pinnacle to find the odds for the Heat to win. They're minus 113, minus 108. And then we took the odds for Butler to score 25 plus points. So that's minus 175 slash 205 separated by a comma, just like the last video. It's just a two leg parlay, right? By the way, we'll assume the boost is giving us final odds of plus 250. Now we have to account for correlation. And so we can actually make a same game parlay within the sports book to help us figure out what the correlation is. So you can see that I've made that same game parlay here. Got the heat money line, Jimmy Butler for over 24.5 points, final odds of 155. And now I'm actually gonna input those totals. So it's gonna be 155. Those are the final odds that DraftKings is giving us. And then equals the two legs that make up that parlay. So it's minus 115 on the heat to win. And then minus 205 for Jimmy Butler to score 25 plus points. You can see that I've got that here. And now after I hit calculate, it's gonna essentially tell us how correlated DraftKings thinks that those two events actually are. So we hit calculate here, and you can see this R right here, R equals 0 0.19. That is essentially the correlation. Basically, DraftKings is saying that these events have about a 19% correlation, meaning there's positive correlation here, which of course makes sense. The Heat are more likely to win as Jimmy Butler scores more points. And so correlated fair value here is actually 176 according to the odds that we have up here and the correlation that DraftKings is giving us. If they were two totally independent events, then they would have less of a chance of both winning. But because they're correlated, you can see our win percentage is higher. This all makes sense to you intuitively for sure. Even if these terms are a little bit confusing, you can understand that a star player going over his point total is more likely to result in the team winning. And so those events are correlated. And so we can essentially get a worse price for the parlay. So if this was the actual boost, we would have a great looking boost here because final odds are 250, fair value is like 176, at least according to the DraftKings correlation and the odds that we initially put into this text box. And so we have a 27% edge here. So we have a great bet. And this is a great boost that we would look to bet. Just to show you what it would do if we were calculating a negative correlation parlay. So if it was Jimmy Butler's under and the heat to win. We can see now final odds on DraftKings is 475. We still have minus 115 for the heat. And now we would change what we have in this correlation text box. So now we'd have 475. We'd still have minus 115 for the heat to win. But now we've got the Jimmy Butler leg the under 25 or under 24 and a half at 165. Now when we input that in here, 
we can see that DraftKings is giving us negative correlation, negative 0.14 correlation, and that greatly changes the correlated fair value of our bet, right? We would need to get a better price because it means if one of the events happens, the other is less likely to have happened. So we would need to get a better price for that parlay. Pretty much all of the major sports books do have same game parlay features now. And so what you can do if you wanna be really thorough is you can take the correlation from DraftKings, you can do it in FanDuel and Caesars and make sure they're all about the same or there's not one major outlier so that your correlation isn't totally skewed. Now, even doing that though, and using this correlation text box, there is a slight flaw in the method. And the slight flaw is that DraftKings, FanDuel, all these books, they wanna give you a worse price than fair value on the same game parlays. And so sometimes when things are positively correlated, they're gonna make them look like they're more positively correlated than they actually are, because of course that would give you a worse price. Similarly, when things are negatively correlated, they might still make them look less negatively correlated than they actually are, meaning that they can give you a worse price again. Now, one method that we can use to account for this and to totally sort of negate that would be to do what's called sort of a four-way DVIG or sometimes even an eight-way DVIG if it's a longer parlay. And there, we can essentially test how much juice the sportsbook is taking from these different parlays and get the true odds straight from there. If all of that was incoherent, you will understand in less than two minutes, I promise this one's actually less complicated than using the correlated text box. I'm gonna go side by side this time because I think it's gonna be easier to see. Now for this four-way DVIG, we're actually gonna uncheck the correlated text box. We don't need that. We're gonna do a four-way DVIG. And how we do that is we make four different same game parlays within the same book and then use slashes like they're separate sides of an individual bet. So I've got that same bet that we made first here, Heat money line, Jimmy Butler over 24.5 points. That is the first side of our bet. That's the side that we're betting. That's always gonna be first. Now we check, okay, now if he goes under, what are the odds for that? We already sort of did that. It's 475. Again, we just changed it again. Now, instead of the Heat winning, we've got the Celtics winning, right? We're betting this one event, Jimmy Butler to go over his 24 and a half and for the Heat to win. But within that bet, there's actually only four possible outcomes, right? Either the Heat win and Jimmy Butler goes over his point total, or the Heat lose and Jimmy Butler goes over his point total, the Heat win and Jimmy Butler goes under his point total, or finally the Heat lose and Jimmy Butler goes under his point total. So we're just putting those four outcomes into this leg text box right here. So now our third slash, which is the Celtics to win or the Heat to lose and Jimmy Butler to go under is 340. Finally, we just need the Heat to lose, which we already have up there, and Jimmy Butler to go over his point total, which is slash 215. Now, we can just hit calculate without even throwing anything into this correlation text box, and we can actually figure out exactly what DraftKings thinks the true odds of this event actually are. And so I'm just using worst case method here. You could show all or use, I mean, if you use worst case, you're always gonna know you have a plus CV bet if it's plus CV to worst case, and we could, see, assuming you did it correctly, and we can see, we have a 23.6% edge here. This is a great bet relative to DraftKings same game parlay odds. This is pretty easy to do, right? You don't even need an odd screen to do this method. You just do a simple four different sides of the bet, the four different outcomes that can happen, right? It's Jimmy Butler over, the Heat to win. It's Jimmy Butler under, the Heat to win. It's Jimmy Butler over, the Heat to lose. It's Jimmy Butler under, the Heat to lose. Those are the four possible outcomes of this bet. And so we just put the four final odds separated by slashes and what we are betting first. And then we spit out the fair value, at least the fair value according to DraftKings at 183. Now, if you wanna be more thorough, if you wanna get a better idea rather than just trusting one book because one book's odds can certainly be off from the market, you'd wanna build this same same game parlay in FanDuel and maybe in the combi books, which is like Barstool and Bet Rivers, maybe in Caesars, you wanna put it in a few different separate same game parlays that's what I always do because I want to make sure that I'm being conservative. And if I put out a bet and say, hey, this is plus CV, I know it's plus CV because I checked it against a bunch of different books and it's plus CV to all of them. We're just going to do the exact same thing on FanDuel. You can see I've got on FanDuel, Heat money line, Jimmy Butler over 24 and a half. And uh, it's kind of blurred out. Sorry, I'll just lower it here real quick. 134. I shouldn't say blurred out. My face is covering it. But you can see final odds are 134. And of course, we will just do the exact same thing. So now we take Jimmy Butler's under in the heat to win, which is 483. It's the next side that we put in here. And then we just do the exact same thing 
that we did on DraftKings for the other two. So I've got all four of those inputs put into here, still final odds of 250, and it looks even better to Fandle. So if we had this bet in real life, we're definitely betting it, even though it's only gonna win, you know, 37, 36% of the time, we're just getting a great price here relative to the odds and because the positive correlation is just so strong. Now you might be thinking, okay, why did we even mess with the correlation text box? Why don't we just do this every time? Just do the four-way DVIGs and just do that. Well, one main reason is because we can't. And that's because the sports books oftentimes don't have overs and unders for all the stuff that we need to bet. Well, what if the boost instead of being at plus 250 was plus 500? But instead of the boost that we got for Jimmy Butler for 25 points, it was actually Jimmy Butler for 35 points in the heat to win. If we get Jimmy Butler for 35 points, well, then how are we going to do a four way on DraftKings? Because they don't have the under, right? They don't have the under 35. And so the four way is just straight up not possible. It might be possible occasionally on one book and not on the other. But oftentimes it's just not when they have like really high overs or really high unders. You can't bet both sides of it especially those Fandle boosts where they're like this guy for 20, this guy for 20, and this guy for 20, when all their standard over-unders are like 27 or 30, you know, the very reduced overs, they don't have the under 20. And DraftKings doesn't necessarily have the under 20. And so you can't do a four-way DVIG necessarily on all of these different boosts. And that's when the correlation text box comes in handy and we have to use that. Is it flawless? No, but it gets us a good idea on what the sports books think the correlation is. If I was going to calculate this boost for heat money line and for Jimmy Butler over 35 plus points, well, it would definitely have to be higher than the odds of plus 500 because it's already 650 in DraftKings same game parlay. But we would have to use these correlation text box to give us a good idea on how correlated they are. Certainly, this is very positively correlated, but is it 30%? Is it 40%? Is it 25%? This can help give us a good idea. This is also why we use multiple sports books because no sports book is necessarily perfectly sharp at everything. Certainly when it comes to same game parlays, they can differ a lot more than even other markets. Sports books kind of differing on how correlated a certain event is. It definitely happens where they're further off than you would think they are. To some degree, it kind of makes sense, right? Because certainly like a player going over his point total is good for the team. But is he a super efficient scorer, right? Maybe not. You know, LeBron going for 30 might not be as positively correlated as Rory Hachimura going for 30, right? If Rory goes for 30, you would think the Lakers are probably winning because that doesn't happen very often, right? And so the correlation isn't the same from player to player. It's not even the same from game to game. And this is why we kind of have to trust the sports books rather than just trying to do it ourselves in our heads. Of course, I've been using all my examples for basketball, but this is relevant to basically every sport, at least where you can bet same game parlays. Like baseball, if you bet on two players on the same team get to get a home run, well, that team is more likely to win because they got at least two runs right there. And of course, the more runs you score in baseball, the better it is. I know that's obvious, but I just think it's worth mentioning. Same with, you know, hockey. If you bet on a player to score a goal, or if you bet on the over or the under to hit, it might favor one team or the other. There's even positive and negative correlation in sports that you would never really consider just intuitively initially such as like in golf if you bet two players to go under there's actually positive correlation there and it's not that you know scotty scheffler's shooting good makes brooks kepka shoot better necessarily it's about the weather conditions and course conditions so if scotty scheffler goes way under it's actually more likely that other players also went way under it's not that he affects it at all but it's correlation right it's you know you've heard in school correlation doesn't equal causation it's not necessarily that these things cause each other but it's that when one of them happens, the other is more likely to happen as well. Another one that might not be as obvious is if you're betting on the MLB. Like I said, obviously, if you bet a player to hit a home run and his team to win, that's obviously positively correlated. But how about the home team to win and the under to hit? Well, these should generally be positively correlated because if the home team is winning by the top of the ninth inning, well, then they're not going to have to bat in the bottom of the ninth. And so there's less likely to be more runs, right, because that's another half of an inning where there could be more runs. So betting on the home team and the under to hit is positively correlated, just like betting on the away team and the over to hit is positively correlated. And then of course the inverse would be negatively correlated. Some of you guys already know all of that, but I just think it's worth keeping in mind that a lot of stuff is correlated that you don't necessarily realize. And you need to keep that in mind if you're calculating these boosts or if you're betting any sort of same game parlays in general. So we talked about the correlation text box. We talked about doing a four-way same game parlay, but what if we have a parlay like this or a boost like this where it's Jimmy Butler for over 25, it's Heat to win, and it's Jason Tatum or any other player to go over or under their point total? Well, how do we do that now? We can't do a four-way DVIG. We can do an eight-way DVIG. 
So we essentially do the exact same thing that we did in that four-way DVIG, where basically we make same game parlays that cover each and every possibility, and then we put them into this text box with slashes with the one that we are betting first. We're essentially just going to do that exact same thing, but we're going to do it eight times now because we need, you know, Tatum's over, Jimmy's over, Celtics to win, Heat to win, and all these different combos. It's going to come out to eight combos, and that will complete our eight-way DVIG. We can do this again when we have over-unders for both of the players. And this certainly applies to other sports as well, assuming that there's over-unders. So if the sports book lets you parlay in MLB a player to get a hit or not to get a hit, you can do four-way DVIGs or eight-way DVIGs with that as well. Same thing with even NFL. I know that's not around for a little while, but a player going over or under his yardage totals, his team to win over, under passing touchdowns. This could apply to all of that stuff. Very first leg for both of these guys to go over and the heat to win is 400. And now we're just going to do, okay, we're going to keep the other two the same. And now we're going to go Jimmy under. Now we're at slash 1000. Now we're going to have both of them go under. Slash 800. Now we have Jimmy over Tatum under and the Heat still to win. And both of them under and the Celtics to win would be the very last one. And then we should have eight here. If you don't have eight by the time you finish, you know you messed something up and you might have to redo it sometimes it could probably help to actually write them down if you get kind of confused in your head like which one did i do and not do i've definitely been there before so we've got one two three four five six seven eight don't worry that two of these are the same did them differently same game probably just ended up finishing on the exact same odds in two of them but they were different anyway well, let's just assume final odds were plus 500 for this boost we don't need the correlation text box and we can see if this is a good bet and clearly there's a lot of juice in this market because this is negative 2.3% expected value. Even though final odds were 400 on the DraftKings same game parlay, we're getting a full 100 better. But because the VIG is so high, fair value is actually 514. This is a great example on, you know, these same game parlays are generally bad bets because there's a lot of VIG in these markets. So sometimes when we get a boost, it might not even boost it enough to beat the no VIG fair odds. This would be one of those examples. But that's how you do an eight-way DVIG. Like I said, you can do the same thing with, MLB and NFL and other sports, but MLB in DraftKings specifically, it's not going to work great. I'll just show you real quickly. So if we go to do one of these MLB bets and let's say it's, you know, two players to get a hit and their team to win or whatever, we try to do it in this White Sox Guardians game. Well, you're not going to have much luck because as you can see here, we've got player to get a hit. We don't have player not to get a hit. We have player to get a home run. We don't have the other side of it. And so it's more difficult to do. Now we could do it with some of the events, right? If it was like first inning total over and a team to win, we do have the over-unders there. And so we could do four-way and eight-way DVIGs with some of these markets, just not all of the player props, at least specifically in DraftKings. Some of the books do let you bet on a player to get a hit or not get a hit in the same game parlay, such as Caesars. Caesars lets you, Vandal does not, um, but some of the other ones do. And so you do have some options. You just might not have as much to compare it to. I've probably rambled enough but hopefully you kind of understand the basics of how to calculate correlation now within the Crazy Ninja Mike Sportsbook DVIGger. It really is an awesome tool. And as you play around with this and as you start DVIGging stuff, you'll see what I mean when I say, hey, same game parlays are usually bad bets. They're usually bad bets. You have to find some sort of massive odds discrepancies or there has to be a really big boost for them to be worth playing because you'll see stuff like 23% market juice where the sportsbooks are just giving you horrible odds. And you'll notice that over the long term and hopefully you will stop for the most part. Again, there's exceptions to every rule, but for the most part, not playing same game parlays and telling your friends, hey, those are bad bets, and that's why the sports books really promote them. But we can beat them with this tool, and we can find odds discrepancies, and we can make it work where the odds are actually in our favor. If you got any questions, definitely hit me up. Good luck on your bets tonight. Not that you need it since you're betting with an edge. And I will definitely make a third version of this video and it's actually probably going to end up being five. In the next version, we're going to talk about how to average odds from different sports books. We're also going to talk about some other features, like what to do if you have a 25 and a half line and a 27 and a half line, but your boost is 26 and a half, and you can't find a line for that. There's functions within the DVIGGER that allow you to come up with odds when you have in between lines, which is a really useful function. We're also going to talk about the hit function, which I have used a couple times in some of these boosts. Vigs where there's not as many odds available and we have to make do with what we've got. There's a bunch we're going to cover more, but you have the basics down now if you're able to make it through this video and the last one, and you should be able to DVIG most of the boosts as is. So, like I said, if you got any questions, hit me up and thanks.